Welcome. I'm Pamela Erlin. I am a psychic channel, a spiritual teacher, and a mystic. Um, it was heavily impressed upon my heart to do this, to read to you, as well as give psychic channeled messages from Jesus. So I'm going to read this to you. This is a sacred course. It's called The Course of Love. I'm going to place it on my desk. I'm going to be reading excerpts of it a little bit at a time and then stopping the reading to channel explanations, elaborations, messages, whatever wants to come forth from Jesus. Uh, when the author, for those of you who don't know what A Course in Love is, it is sort of like a follow-up to A Course in Miracles, which is also a sacred chat text who also had a channel, and much like this book, um, also the channel, the author channels Jesus, <laughs> as do I. Um, and have been since around age five. So this is, I believe, the fourth, um, you know, reading and channeling both that we've had of this course. After this, I'm going to pray about it, meditate on it, ask if I need to also do the same with the Course in Miracles. Many of you are asking that. I just find that it's a powerful way to start our day to be together to do these readings and then to ask Jesus what he feels like he wants to share about each of the excerpts as we go through them one by one. Today we are beginning the prelude of the book. So we are right here. We've gotten through the introduction over the past few days and now headed into the prelude. It's so exciting. Um, I do wanted to take I do want to take a moment to um, give a brief elaboration because as a clear conduit channel, I need to explain what that is and what that's going to look like. So again, I'm going to be reading and I'm going to place my book down on the table as I'm reading. So you will see me looking down quite a bit. Um, I am a clear conduit channel. So as much as I love trancing as well, um, I find that I'm a lot clearer when my eyes are open when I'm really conscious and within myself, I don't, I'm a oneness teacher. I don't believe in the concept of separation. So even me remaining a channel after, you know, God realization was a very difficult concept, except that I know that I'm the same as all other beings and so are you. Now me getting you to believe that is quite another story. So as a channel, I honor your belief in separation by continuing to channel these quote, other beings that I also believe are you and that I also believe are me. <laughs> Fun concept, right? But we like separation here on this planet. It's creative, it's beautiful. It gives us a distinct structure and feeling and we choose to continue that belief, which is why channeling still exists even after realization because it's fun. <laughs> um, so when I read, you'll see me looking down. When I'm channeling, I'm looking at the being that's typically over here to my right or over here or behind the camera or somewhere else. And you'll see me watching them intently and listening to what they're saying and repeating it back to you. And that's how clear conduit channeling goes. You won't see me with closed eyes, anything like that, um, because I like to be awake and aware of what's going on. And that's what I do. Let's begin. All right, um, part one of the prelude, it says, this is a course in miracles. It is a required course. It's time for you to take it now. You are ready, miracles are needed. Okay, part two of the prelude says, pray for all those in need of miracles. To pray is to ask. He stops me there. Jesus's comments on this are, many in your communities are asking what prayer is, is, is it the same as meditation you ask us? It is because an intention is placed. I hear you because you are me. I hear you because you are so powerful in your request at this time. To pray is simply to set an intention towards the universe and then to have it reflected to you in an answer. That is simply all that it is. It is not a submission. It is not a bowing down or relinquishing of your own power. It is not a part of a religion until you choose to make it such. We continue part two of the prelude. I'm going to read it to you now. It says, to pray is to ask, but for what are you asking? 
This is the first instruction in this course in Marigolds. All are in need of Marigolds. This is the first step in miracle readiness, asking for all to be included in what we do here. By praying for all those in need of miracles, you are praying for all to learn as you learn. You are asking to link your mind with all minds. You are asking to end your separated state and learn in a state of unity. This is a basic recognition that this is the only way you learn. Hold on, I'm listening to Jesus's comments on it. And he says, You continue in the powerful desire for the concept of free will. You continue in your request to believe that you are separate from I and from all. I love you and I will not end your illusion. In your beautiful illuminating power that shines through all things, when you pray for all to learn as you learn. Please do it lovingly. Pray that they learn compassionately and lovingly. Pray that they learn peacefully. Bye, Emmy. Thank you for shutting the door. <laughs> She's on her way out to school. Let's see, I think he wants to say something else. I'm listening. You and you alone are the only one that can end the illusion of separation that currently exists and currently causes pain. When you live it from a state of fear, I ask you today to wonder what it would feel like what it would look like. Who would you be when you don't pray from supplication? Who would you be when you don't pray simply from a fear of pain, a fear of suffering? Who would you be when you don't pray or meditate from a state of believing that suffering is endless. Who would you be if you pray or meditate from a state of trust and hope and faith? I'm gonna read part three now of the prelude. It says, the separated self or the ego does not learn. Even when the ego has taken many courses and received many teachings, the ego has not learned, but has merely become threatened. Spirit does not need a course in miracles. If the ego cannot learn and the spirit does not need to, then who is this course and all other such courses for? Learning our true identity the identity of the self that is capable of learning is something that everyone must do. Can the ego learn this? Never. Does spirit need to? No. Then who is this course for? Part four says, this is a basic question that was not adequately answered in Course in Miracles. While A Course in Miracles is meaningless to the ego and unnecessary to spirit, it would seem to have no audience at all if these are the only two states that exist. Since it is possible to part spirit and part ego, assuming there would be such a state in which learning could take place would be meaningless. Part 5 says, The world as a state of being, as a whole, has entered a time brought on largely by A Course in Miracles, in which readiness for miracle-mindedness is upon it. Yeah. A Course in Miracles opened a door by threatening the ego. 
all those who, with egos weakened, walk this world with the hope of leaving ego behind, with miracle-minded intent, have awakened human beings to a new identity. They have ushered in a time of ending our identity crisis. Not since Jesus walked the earth has such a time been upon humankind. He stops me here and he says, isn't it exciting? Isn't it glorious? In your current state of pain, it may not feel glorious. I am not asking you not to acknowledge, not to feel the pain of it. I am asking you to understand that this time is so special, that this time is so powerful, that this time is the first time in your time and space, presence and distortions, that this has happened for heaven on earth to be possible, for the miracle to be embodied, for the time when not even ego can feel a separation or a threat. And you are upon that time now. You are weary. I hear your prayers. I hear your prayers of woe, of suffering, of pain. I hear when you feel tortured by these environments. And I ask you now to complete this course. I ask you now to wonder about what it would feel like to uncover and unravel the world's collective ego consciousness. You have said to us in your prayers, but Jesus, there is such a divide. Everyone believes differently. What is true? What is right? What is love in this time of pain? I send you my arms, which hold you. I send you the balm of compassion, which is forgiveness not of yourself nor others. When you can't do that, you simply trust and forgive the circumstance of the separation and pain. You see, the separation that you seem to acknowledge, which seems to divide each of you, is a collective ego consciousness of the world you don't have to take it upon yourself to choose a side. That's the only lesson. The answer isn't this side, that side, this massive conscious ego belief, this massive conscious ego belief. There is a middle way. You can't know it from here. But it does not occur by abolishing your ego or working against it. We're going to read one more on page six, part six of the prelude. It says, what is in you that is capable of learning? What is in you that recognizes that ego is not what you are? What is in you that recognizes your spirit? What is in you that hovers between two worlds? the world of the ego's dominion and that of spirit. What recognizes the difference? The difference, the Christ is in you. He says, and the Christed energies are not what religion has taught you, although you can find its spirit there. It is not what a book has taught you, what a parent has taught you. The Christed energies cannot be taught to the mind. They can only be remembered by the spirit. We love you. <laughs>